What is happening, everybody, dear friends and neighbors? Uh, today we have something fun for you. I have been experimenting with this for a little while now, um, but we are going to go in depth on what is called English milk punch. Uh, very quickly, uh, there are actually two types of drink that are sometimes called milk punch. One is more of what's considered to be a traditional New Orleans drink that is more of a, a rich, creamy, uh, brandy, a uh, little bit of milk, a little bit of sweetener, so kind of like a, a kind of a rich dessert-like drink. Another style of drink is called English milk punch, and this has been around for a good long while. Uh, one of the fun facts out there is that when Charles um, Dickens, I almost said Charles Darwin, when Charles Dickens kicked the bucket, uh, rest in peace, uh, pour one out for him today, uh, uh, when he kicked the bucket, uh, he had a bunch of liters of this in its in his basement. And so, uh, so what is this? What are we doing? What are we doing with milk? I already have my milk portioned out right here. But so what we're actually going to do today is uh, a term that can make a little people squeamish is we are going to curdle this milk by pouring a cocktail into it. Now, so the word curdle for some people can set off an alarm bell or whatever. So uh, curdling is something that does happen very naturally when we're making cheese. Uh, when you're making cottage cheese. Now, everybody loves it, but cottage cheese has that tang and has those curds in it. Uh, that is a, when you've heard people talk about it, like Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating her curds and whey, while it might not have been that exactly, that is essentially cottage cheese. And the reason why we go to the process of this and why this really even started back in the day is two things. This process of what's going to happen when we curdle this milk is it is going to take things like this pineapple juice, because we're going to make a pina colada, and this lime juice is going to leach on to a lot of the organic matter in there, and it's going to suck it into the curds, and eventually all the curds are going to settle to the bottom of the drink that we're going to make. It is also, we need rum for a pina colada, going to reach on to some of the tannins uh, in this that makes this aged rum right here, uh, brown, it's going to leach onto those and pull those out. It is essentially going to soften a lot of the flavor. So one, uh, despite talk about, you know, founding fathers and Thomas, you know, Thomas, uh, George Washington's, you know, whiskey or Thomas Jefferson's whiskey, most of the spirits that were being consumed uh, in early America and in Britain for that matter would have been a lot harsher than we're used to. And so this process kind of really helped to kind of soften things up a bit. So uh, with that, uh, the way that English milk punch is made is you, to perfect the curdling process, what we want to do is we want to pour the cocktail into the milk. Uh, so I've already got my whole milk. Whole milk is what is recommended. Uh, again, another little divergence here. Uh, we need a certain amount of fat content to create the right curds, the kind of fat to protein content. And overall people have, they've looked at uh, skim milk, 1%, half, you know, creams, uh, half and halves. Overall people say that they find half, uh, whole milk to be the most effective. Um, so I'm making a very large batch of this. Um, and so there'll be a scaled down recipe that you can always use at home if you want to follow along right here. So I've got 18 ounces of milk poured into this guy right here. From there, I need a, uh, this is a, a one to one. Uh, so this is demerara sugar, not brown sugar. This is a less refined sugar, a demerara right here. I need three ounces of this guy right here. Uh, because this cocktail, in addition to this syrup, it's also gonna be getting sweetness from, um, because we are using, uh, in a traditional pina colada, you might have uh, kind of more of a coconut cream or what sometimes is called coco lopez. Either way, we're used to that kind of like very white kind of, you know, kind of, um, kind of creaminess from actual like real coconut in there. But because we're getting our creaminess from the whole milk here, we're just going to be using coconut water in this case. So three ounces of that Demerara syrup right there. Uh, I need uh, nine ounces wanted to save you a little bit of time here. Nine ounces of lime juice going in here just like this, all reckless and whatnot. Good. Then uh, I need 12 ounces of pineapple. Uh, 
wrong. Um, from here, I need a whopping 24 ounces of coconut water. Um, useful thing to know, and it's only a minor amount, but when we are uh, creating a cocktail, uh, bartenders like to have control over the sweetener as much as possible. In a lot of coconut waters, even those that are like the fresh pressed and organic and whatever, I find that a lot of them had a very little bit of sugar added um, in, on top of what's already naturally occurring. And so I did find a brand, uh, this Rio Coco, that had no sugar added to it. Um, so again, it wasn't a lot, so it's not alarming like you're drinking a sugar bomb, but uh, I didn't want to deal with that. And so uh, this would be the first little measurement I got to do. So I need, this has about, right, right about 17 ounces in here. I need 24 ounces. So grab this guy, get him all poured out. All right, perfect. Then I'm going to need about seven ounces from this guy right here. So we can get this to balance right here so I don't have to duck down too low on you guys. I did all this math in advance in my head to make sure I didn't totally botch it on the fly. All right, so got my coconut water, all good to go. From there, I need 12 ounces of falernum. What in the hell is falernum? This is very commonly used. Uh, this is a liqueur that's been around for a long time, kind of in more of a tropical setting. Uh, in this, a lot of times you're gonna have a lot of citrus flavor, also a lot of warming notes like clove, allspice. And so you, this is very common if you read over a lot of tiki recipes, you will typically find in kind of tiki or modern tropical if you prefer, uh, you will find falernum often called for. So we need 12 ounces of falernum. And voila, four more to go. Okay, 12 ounces of falernum, getting to be quite a bit. And um, so from here, uh, what was called for was some kind of aged rum. Now what I'm gonna do, because rum is really built for this in a way, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually use a couple of rums. Uh, if you're doing this at home, I've already made it. It is fantastic. I've got a rum here that's got a little bit of Jamaican notes in it. So it's just gonna add a little extra character to this. But I'm gonna primarily use uh, an aged Barbados rum. I've got Real McCoy's Five right here. Uh, bar, uh, Plantation rum also makes a, a five-year rum, which is also which is what I used in my original batch. It's perfect. So uh, a... Uh, 750, as we often call it, is 25 ounces. So, uh, so it is 25 ounces. I got to get to 32. So what I'm going to do, let's see. I'm going to do eight ounces of this. All right, eight ounces of this guy. So 25 and eight, that is 33 for those counting along at home. I'm gonna throw in nine ounces of this just for fun. So, so yeah, so wait, 25 and eight is 33, eight more is 41. I was always. I did find out later in life that I was pretty good at math. Okay, so that's 41. I need one more little ounce of this guy right here. Okay, so the good news is with the clarified cocktail, took a minute to kind of batch it up. But the great news is uh, once this whole magic is kind of done right here, this is a cocktail that is very shelf stable, like I said. So once I'm done with this, and you'll have to come back for the second part of the video later, but once we kind of marry these two things together, uh, I can put it in my refrigerator. You can let it sit in there for a month or so, typically. Now I'm just gonna make sure. Mm -hmm. That's great, that's great. So um, there's always little ways I can doctor this on the back end, which we'll talk to, but this is something that's important, uh, tasting the ingredients in advance. But we also wanna make sure that like, we're getting the drink that we ultimately want. All right, so I want you to kind of have the front row seat here. I'm gonna push this in just a little bit. 
We've got our mobile bar top right here. And I will hold this up as soon as I'm done. But important when you're this home, everybody agrees on this. People have different thoughts on various things regarding this stuff. You always pour the cocktail into the milk. It really just makes sure that you get a better curdling. But it's going to curdle pretty much immediately. Okay. So I can see it right here. I'm going to hold it up for you guys. I'm going to give this just a quick stir just to make sure that everything is kind of married together. With that level of splashing, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Um, so from here, I'm going to hold this very carefully because I don't want to drop it. So you might be able to begin to see that um, it is beginning to separate in there. And um, from here, uh, I have read and even done um, kind of the straining that's coming up soon. In as little as a half hour to 45 minutes, I think 45 minutes was kind of the lower end barrier I pushed. A lot of people tend to recommend 12 plus hours. I have an AV tested that a lot, but guess what? I've got time. And so uh, when you see me next, I'll probably be wearing some different clothes because it's going to be, well, tomorrow. Um, but we're going to let this sit overnight. It also kind of gives it a little more chance to marry, as I understand. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this trusty lid right here. Throw this on. Go in my refrigerator. We'll see you on the other side. And we are back. Uh, so as you can probably see here, I'm going to try to be careful here. We have a separation has definitely, definitely occurred right here. Um, so uh, from here, what really needs to happen, some places suggest straining twice, but what needs to happen, and this is the time intensive part, so I won't put you through all of it. First, I suppose we should grab a little spoon. And for those keeping track, this is a straw. Drop our little straw in here. It's a wonderful, honestly, array of tropical and juicy. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited. This turned out very, very well. Um, and uh, so what I'm going to do from this point in time is uh, I'm going to actually try. I've, I've, I've made these cocktails before. Like I said, I have never made them at this scale. So uh, I'm not entirely sure what the best way is to do this without, uh, without having all the large scale resources. So uh, part of it could be in the long run, I'm gonna end up investing in larger scale filtration. But in the meanwhile, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ladle some stuff in here. And once the liquid starts coming out, I will show you guys that really what we're gonna find on the other end is gonna be a, a relatively crystal clear liquid and uh, that will be basically ready to drink. If it is ever still cloudy at all, you can always run through a filter a second time and that will of course move very, very fast in a comparative sense right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a, a breather right here. We don't need to put you guys through all of the labor. Um, but yeah, so from here, you can begin to see a crystal clear liquid is dropping in there. Some of the tools that we can use at this point. So let's say that we determine uh, that this is uh, uh, this is a little too uh, a little too thin on body. We can use um, denser sugars to kind of create a rounder taste on the palate. Um, we can also use things like uh, citric acid if we ever like. Oh, this is a little too sweet. We can always add a little citric or malic acid. Are things that bartenders use sometimes these days to help kind of uh, stand in if it needs a little bit of a lemon lime style bump right there. Uh, but yeah, so uh, clarifying cocktails. Um, a little bit of a mystery up front, but overall, uh, a relatively straightforward process once you begin to understand, get a good recipe on your hands. And uh, so with that, uh, we'll get this final product posted out there, um, but you definitely need this. And like I said before, this guy. Um, uh, drop this in, in a glass over a large ice cube, sit back and, and uh, sip it. Uh, it's going to be perfect for whenever you feel like one. Take care.